Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fabulous. I'm super excited. We've got Tuesdays with Charlie coming up. That's always fun. Talking to your dad. Of course it is. He always makes me a little bit nervous. awesome. Never know for sure what he's going to (laughs) say. He's kind of a loose cannon. That's why it's fun. That's why I have my finger on the bleep button (laughs) at all times. Uh, Hey, did you know the number of theories of why sailors wear bell-bottom pants? There's a bunch of them out there, but one is that the bell-bottoms are easy to pull over boots. Another is that they're easier to roll up when doing chores. Others say it's because they're easier to remove if a sailor falls overboard. Or that the pants could be knotted and filled with air to be used as flotation that's devices. That's what I've heard. That's the one. That's the one I've heard the most yeah. as well. So I don't know which one is true. Or maybe they're maybe all they're true. all true. Yeah. Uh, have you ever heard of the Spitzer Space Telescope? No. It's a big telescope. It's discovered the biggest but never before seen ring around the Saturn of uh, the planet of Saturn. A thin array of ice and dust particles lies at the far reaches of the Saturnian system, and its orbit is tilted twenty seven degrees from the planet's main ring. So there you go. One last thing on here. The ability to solve complex math problems is a trait that you were born with. So if you're good at math, you were born with it. If you're not good at math, I'm not. blame your mom and dad. Yeah, I am not. <laughs> According to scientists. There you go. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Coming up, we appreciate you uh, tuning in. We've got some fun things happening today. We'll tell you all about it. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Tuesday, October the 25th. Today is Chucky the Notorious Killer Doll Day. Ah, I you, just yeah. watched yeah, that you movie. And Troy, I watched uh, a, a tiny little bit of it. It was the Bride of Chucky. Bride you of guys Chucky. Watched. Yeah. That was so dumb. It's scary movie season. Yeah, I, I've been watching a lot of those, those lately. Those two and were watching I love it. I was like, this season for that. I have to leave because I'm getting dumber just watching this. <laughs> it was I, entertaining, though. You could hardly pull oh, yeah. yourself away. I, I was watching. I was here for a long up, time, but I could feel my brain cells dying. And standing up watching it for a long time. I had to leave. <laughs> By the time I walked away, I barely knew how to leave the room. That's Those how dumb I had Those are great done. movies. It's also International Artist Day today. It is Sourist Day today. And it's, oh, we're going to celebrate this one, World Pasta Day. All right. We're going to come up with some good dinner that we can make that'll be pasta. I'm not sure what it is, but we'll come up with something. Thanks for listening on a Tuesday to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Legally, we got to have insurance. That's why getting the very best rate is paramount. I'm Jared Parsons. I founded the first national and virtual insurance agency. Until now, you were limited to the agents in your area. But what if the rates are better somewhere else? At Parsons, we shop around and we get you the best rate. It's that simple. Go to RadioInsuranceGuy.com. That's RadioInsuranceGuy.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. How would you react if your spouse told you to get rid of your pet or he'd leave you? One woman had to make the tough decision regarding her pet, and her pet was a crocodile. Oh, good Lord. This is in Australia. Victoria Louding's husband found out just how unimportant he was when he gave his wife an ultimatum. Either your pet crocodile goes or I'm leaving. Vicky said, okay, see ya. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't think that was an unreasonable request to get rid of the crocodile. She said, there's no way I can get rid of five foot Johnny. Oh my God. Which she says is, quote, like a child to her. She's helped raise this croc for 13 years. And she gives the croc the run of the house, even lets it sleep with her son in his bed. Oh, my gosh. She adopted the crocodile after it was left on her, left on her doorstep uh, a long time ago, so 13 years ago. Her husband, Greg, said she spent way too much time with the pet and asked her to give it up in a bid to save their marriage. She refused, so the couple is getting divorced. Oh, man. She is a trained nurse. Her husband... Uh, well, that's a good thing for when the... <laughs> crocodile severs her son's leg. She said, husbands can look after themselves, but my crocodile just can't make his own meals. Give it to the zoo. Her son, Andrew, is only 18 months older than the crocodile. Oh she said, the experience is like having two children to look after. So how could I possibly get rid of the crocodile? So I think it's funny that the crocodile's name is Johnny. I mean, that does not seem like a crocodile name, does it? <laughs> hey, Johnny. <laughs> it's a little nuts. Johnny the crocodile. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know why that part of all of the entire story. Why is it that that's what I find? That's what you picked a little out humorous. of the story. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that's interesting. So Johnny, the thirteen-year-old crocodile, gets to just roam around the house. Meanwhile, her hubby, fifty-two-year-old hubby, out of the house. Sorry, you want you want a divorce? All right, see ya. Crazy. You know it's true though because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. Illegal drugs may have a street value, but it doesn't mean you can't purchase gasoline with them, right? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Apparently that does mean that. Frederick County Sheriff deputies have arrested a man after he allegedly offered a store clerk some marijuana for some gasoline. As it happened, the classic fuel store on Old National Pike in New Market, Maryland, said, the deputy said the 52, 52-year-old man? I was thinking this would be like an 18-year-old punk. No. A 52-year-old man offered marijuana for gasoline. The clerk called authorities. The man and his motorcycle were searched. They found <laughs> suspected cocaine How on him. How much does it cost to fill up a motorcycle? Not Are you much. seriously going to risk going to jail what for does it take? a motorcycle? Two gallons max? <laughs> I mean, he also had oxycodone pills, and uh, they found marijuana as well. The man was charged with possession of cocaine, so oh, he apparently had some boy. of that. Uh, marijuana and drug paraphernalia. So why... If he's got money for all that, he couldn't cough up a couple of bucks for gasoline. <laughs> for a motorcycle? Just, it's not like he was driving an SUV. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right. Kids, that's what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Here's a little known sport. Cow fighting. Yeah. Cow fighting. You've never heard of this? Have you? No. Mo- no, me neither. Uh, if it doesn't sound familiar because it hasn't quite made the Olympic status yet, but every October, the tiny town of martin g of it's a swiss town apparently they stage cow fights pitting pregnant female cows against each other this doesn't sound nice this comes in spite the fact that cows have no natural desire to fight other cows and they can uh they can't even be forced to fight each other most of the time the cows just stand there and moo it's a very strange fact about cow fighting (laughs) the winning cow is determined in a way that nobody really knows but they just choose a winner because the cows don't really not fight. fight. Yeah, so they try to get them to fight. They almost never do. Anyway, the the Queen of the Alps is the title the cow wins and becomes 10 times more valuable than the losing cow, even though both of them did nothing whatsoever but stand there and moo. Wow. And one of them finally says, this one over here wins. They're milking that for all it's worth. <laughs> I, saw, I knew something was going on. I saw the smile that only... <laughs> That only I can tell means Heidi has a zinger. There you go. <laughs> it wasn't and, uh, really a zinger. That, that was, was more of a John joke. That was a John joke. Was a, <laughs> hey, it was a zinger. We've got your <laughs> chalk one up for Heidi. We've got your uh, uh, scoop of the day on the way and Tuesdays with Charlie before you know it. The scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at bluebunny.com. Now your scoop of the day. Research shows that if you're an innie and not an outie, your belly button is home to about, are you ready for this? Gross. 60 to 100 or more species of bacteria, fungi, and yeasts. Although researchers from North Carolina State say they found more than 60 or 70 species of bacteria in the average belly button. They found more than 1,400 species overall. That is just yucky. Uh, William Shakespeare may have been stoned while he was writing his famous plays. New research shows <laughs> that there were four old pipes found in the garden of his English home that contained residue of marijuana. So they think that old uh, uh, Bill Shakespeare was a stoner, apparently. So, How old? I mean, I were they able to date those things? That I have no clue. These are from when he lived here. It could Probably. have been any stoner. Maybe somebody it's just some stoner afterwards. that likes to hang out in his garden. Could it's have been like somebody that lived there before house. him. I don't know. But they had, you know, etched on the side, Bill Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure they did, did not really have that. <laughs> hey, according to a study, people who are extremely obese are twice as likely to injure themselves than those who weigh less. I mean, I can see that. I've hurt myself walking up steps before. I'm like, oh, wow, what was that? I pulled a muscle. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to steer clear of steps. 
Hey, research has shown that the most likely place for lost airline luggage to turn up is Cairo, Egypt. Yeah. Really? Yeah. For some reason, things get sent to Cairo. I don't know why. Other popular destinations for your missing baggage, Amsterdam. Another place, Bangkok. Towards the top of the list, also uh, followed by Spain, United States, and Germany. So if you go one place and your luggage goes somewhere else, chances are it's going to go to one of those places. They are the most popular places for lost luggage to turn up. Hmm. That is crazy. Researchers at the Stevens Institute of Technology in Binghampton University, they found uh, hackers can filch your ATM pin with 90% accuracy. What does filch mean? Does that mean guess? I mean, yeah, it means that they can get obtain. Uh, okay, so they could do it with 90% accuracy in just three tries by cracking the accelerometer in your fitness tracker. What does that mean? I don't have that. <laughs> I, a fitness tracker, is that less like, like one a of Fitbit those or something? Fitbits? Yeah. So they, they can, I don't know. I have a headache even thinking about that story. So they can, let me try it again. They can hack. Hackers can filch your ATM <laughs> pin with 90% accuracy in just three tries by cracking the accelerometer in your fitness tracker. Well, I don't have a fitness tracker, so apparently I'm set. <laughs> and huh. I didn't set my pin number, so you could guess all you want. <laughs> I can't even remember it most of the time. All right, here's a story you can read more about on our Facebook page. A security engineer this week stumbled upon a part of the internet usually hidden from us on this part of the world. It is a list of websites that are available to people with internet access in North Korea. Did you know that there are only 28 websites that they can go to from mm-hmm. North Korea? Matt, I, I knew that it was extremely limited. I yeah. didn't know how many. But Matt I'm... Bryant's list includes every site ending in .kp, which is the country's code associated with North Korea, uh, most of the sites are a mix of propaganda, news, and education. And many of these things are things that you know people here would say are not accurate. I wonder they how they block the internet oh, from going to other websites. Like, how yeah. do they keep it from going to dot coms and stuff? Well, because they control the internet, so they control what you can actually connect to from that particular location. That's bizarre. So. Anyway, that's in North Korea. I've got a link to that story at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. And finally, watching old episodes of your favorite TV show may relax your brain and give you an energy boost. New shows don't have that effect. TV reruns rev up willpower and self-control. They even boost puzzle-solving skills. The quote here is, The restorative effect is specific to watching uh, re-watching television shows, according to University of Buffalo researcher Jade Derrick. And then the quote goes on to say, just watching whatever's on TV does not produce the same benefits. So if you watch your favorite program from way back when, you know, it's something that you watched as a child, and then you watch it now, like with your kids, uh, you actually get some brain boost from that. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. Good news. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Election day is almost here. No matter which side you're rooting for, you now have a place to get informed and to truly voice your opinion at politicalstorm.com. An amazing resource with information from people on both sides of the aisle all in one place. Watch videos, read blogs, listen to podcasts like mine, and read fun editorials. You can also contribute with your own blog for free. Be a part of the community at politicalstorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice, too, at politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. And it's time right now for my favorite program, something we do every Tuesday just because we can. We pick up the phone and we call my father in law for a little program we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with, with Charlie. Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? Hey, it's Tuesday. It is. So, what kind of cool stuff are we going to learn today? Okay, you know who Hulk Hogan is? Yeah. I do, yeah, yeah. Okay, he was involved in two plane crashes and ironically was wearing the same pair of red underwear during both crashes. Nope. <laughs> I thought it was him, like, get rid of those underwear. No, those are his lucky underwear. <laughs> I don't think so. If he was involved in two plane crashes. But he walked away from both of them. <laughs> so t- t- this? I bet now they're red and brown, actually, if you want to get technical. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're the same pair, so probably are. Uh. <laughs> He will not board a plane without his lucky red underwear. <laughs> there you go. That's good. So with, in, with the brown stain. So, in other words, don't sit right next to Hulk Hogan if you're ever flying. <laughs> or maybe do, because that's the row that always survives. I don't know. 
Hey, then, uh, well, we had hamburgers the other night, too, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Very and good hamburgers. Your, your son is a pretty good cook. He credits you for, he said, uh, everything I know I learned from Charlie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hamburger comes from the toughest and least appetizing portions of a cow. Yeah. No kidding. Okay, these are mixed commonly so that the average four ounce portion of hamburger comes from at least 55 different cows. Are you kidding me? Really? You take all the, if there's chicken, it'd be lips and. <laughs> but I don't know what they use on cows, but tails and hooves. I don't know. Well, whatever it <laughs> so that's is, where the, that's where hamburger comes from. Whatever it is, it's darn good. Then, did you know that in the U.S., forty percent of pizza eaten by children is for breakfast? Breakfast, forty percent of the pizza. Yep, that is crazy. You know, you know how you tell a good pizza? How can you tell? If you can leave it sit on the counter all night and eat it again in the morning that's without right. putting the microwave or anything. That's right. I agree with you. Um, both of you are wrong, and that could give people food poisoning, so don't no, do that. No, it is perfectly fine. I've done it my whole life. Just because you've done it doesn't mean it's perfectly <laughs> fine. My dad taught me that. Yeah. yeah that's I've what done I'm it saying. too, and look how we turned out. <laughs> yeah. Both the perfect picture of health. <laughs> that's when you know you have great pizza. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to encourage people to please refrigerate your pizza. These two also pick up French fries up from under the seat of the car and say, oh, that's fine. <laughs> we do not. <laughs> Blow a little hair off of that. It'll be just fine. <laughs> Pizza, you <laughs> 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 We can say some of that on the radio. <laughs> then we got uh, Halloween coming up, right? Yes, we do. Nice transition there, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know why clowns have white faces? Why, why is that? Well, back in centuries ago, Clowns would kill children, then grind up their bones. In the process, the clown's face would become white with with bone dust. What? What? That's true. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's accurate. This Where did you ago, find that tidbit of information? <laughs> all my facts are true. Okay. <laughs> children, don't be afraid of clowns. Wow. And then do you know what clown means in German? What's that? <laughs> what? Don't leave the kids alone with that one. <laughs> that's what it means? That's what it means. <laughs> okay. Well, that's why that's why clowns are scary today. You know, okay. and you don't like clowns. No, I, I don't care <laughs> and for clowns. Here's the thing I'll say. I, I think clowns are just fine. So there you go. I'm I'm for cl- I'm pro clown. You guys are anti clown. <laughs> <laughs> you tell that to all <laughs> running around now with clown station people. <laughs> Again, we can't say that on the radio. <laughs> I'm not those clowns. I'm not for the naughty clowns that are doing naughty things. I'm not for those. <laughs> Just to clarify. does not like the clowns that kill children and grind up their bones. I'm not for those clowns either, no. I got one last thing for you. What Thank is goodness. <laughs> if you're pregnant, which I'm not, I look like I am, but I'm not, <laughs> male fetuses are able to have an erection in the last trimester. Are you kidding me? No. Huh. I had no clue. Well, now you do. Why do we even call this guy? <laughs> I mean... Thank you, Charlie. Hey, are, are you? <laughs> this is Heidi's dad. For those of you that didn't know that, uh, are you ready for a question from me? I think I got the answer. How much meteor dust falls to Earth in a single day on planet Earth? Here, oh, I bet you it's in the it's in the tons, isn't it? A thousand tons of meteor dust falls to Earth every day. Hmm. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Wow. Well, That's... you should have said how many tons fall, not how many pounds. Oh, well, it's a thousand tons. <laughs> All right, I got another one here. This one you might get. We'll see. He's trying to trip you up. You didn't even have a chance. Oh, Dad. I wasn't trying. I'm just reading it the way it's written, and I didn't <laughs> translate it. All right, good talking to you, Charlie. Thank you so much for taking our call. Bye, Daddy. <laughs> Bye, Flop. Bye, John. Bye, bye. My father-in-law, right there. We talk to him every Tuesday, just because we can. It's a little show we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with, with Charlie. Charlie. John and Heidi. Are you ready for duel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyle Dowling on guitar, Brett Gunderson on bass, Sam DeVito on drums, and frontman Dual Shape. Gotta keep rocking, gotta keep sucking, bringing it down like rain. Dual's new single just hit iTunes and it's selling fast. Get your copy now. Their first single, Supernova, is available now for less than a buck. Learn more and find a direct link to buy Supernova at Facebook.com slash Dual Rocks. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Uh, in 1776, if you made $4,000 a year, you were considered wealthy. 
Wow. $4,000 a year. Again, that was in 1776. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Sea lions get sunburns. Did you know that? I, I did not now know you that. Know. That seems also counterproductive there in the sun a lot. Yeah, they are. Also, about sea lions, they can get seasick. Yeah. <laughs> if put on board a... <laughs> They're kind of useless. Yeah, well, they? it says if you put a sea lion on a boat, they will get seasick just like people do. So there you go. Hmm. Fun fact not, not from, like, swimming. <laughs> no, not from... Oh, all this ocean. They're sick all the time and they're sunburnt, poor, miserable creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Almost half the newspapers in the world are published in the United States and Canada. So really? between these two countries, we have oh, about half of the newspapers. Hmm. So there you go. A couple of fun facts for you on a Tuesday. John and Heidi. Legally, we got to have insurance. That's why getting the very best rate is paramount. I'm Jared Parsons. I founded the first national and virtual insurance agency. Until now, you were limited to the agents in your area. But what if the rates are better somewhere else? At Parsons, we shop around and we get you the best rate. It's that simple. Go to RadioInsuranceGuy.com. That's RadioInsuranceGuy.com. John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show. I got a thing here. uh, Ten ways to raise a brat. Okay. So if you don't want to raise a brat, don't do these things. If you want to raise a brat, let him or him or her say no to you when they're just little kids and they want to yeah, do something and I you want them to do something. There's no way that yeah, happened with that our didn't kids. happen. Our kids, I, and we, you know what? We've had people tell us you guys did a pretty darn good job raising these kids. Yeah. And I say Heidi sure did. I don't. <laughs> I don't even know that. Who are the? You guys live in my house? I've never met you before. I'm just kidding. In fact, just the other night, I was reprimanding our daughter for yeah. something that she did wrong, and you come in. <laughs> as, as you don't need to. Good cop, bad cop. You don't cop. need to yell at her. I got her. to be good cop. <laughs> I was like, I absolutely needed hey, to yell at her. what did her. I get, though? She I got a hug. She was very disrespectful. Did I get a hug? <laughs> I never get hugs. She even gave me a hug. She was like, thanks, Dad. I'm like, you're welcome. Your mom is so mean. <laughs> Back to this list over here. How to raise a brat. Number nine, do not give any duties or, or responsibilities to them. So they're saying, you know, do if you don't want them to be a brat. Number eight, never discipline them. Number seven, uh, defend them in school. Six, give them everything they want. Five, let your child come and go as they please. Four, make sure they're popular. Three, let them watch TV whenever they want. Again, the list of how to make sure your kid is a brat. Never instruct your child to be polite to adults. And then the last thing on the list is never, ever, ever say I love you. So, again... This list is probably designed to tell you what not to do. So you yes. should tell your kids you love them. Absolutely. As you often should tell as you them can. to be polite to adults. You shouldn't let them watch TV whenever and whatever they want. Uh, you know, the what else was on the list here? Make sure that they know when they should be home. They can't just come and go as they please. Don't give them everything they want. Unless, of course, they don't ask for anything. Because I've, I've had that, too. You know, our, our kids never really ask for much. So they did kind of get, I don't want to say everything they ever asked for, because there were some things we were like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. as our son got older, he's like, I want to get this gun. I'm like, you're not getting that gun. Mm. No. No more gun. <laughs> Baby steps. I know you're 18. I know you're a man, but you don't need that gun. <laughs> so calm down. So anyway, there's a list of how to raise a brat. In Besides, 10- mom wants that gun. Yeah. If we're going to spend money on guns, <laughs> it's going to my gun How safe. to raise a brat in 10 simple steps from the John and Heidi Show. If you're a business owner or the person in charge of advertising, I have a special offer just for you. We're doing a jingle special this month. Did you know that when you put words to music, they're nine times more memorable? How would you like to be the name in your industry and have people sing in your song? We've worked with hundreds of small businesses to create their own musical image, and we want to help you too. Reach out right now, and we'll give you $500 off. Squeeze it into this year's budget and get results for years to come. Learn more and hear examples at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. John and Heidi. You might not think that a world like ours would need a law like this, but apparently we have, for some reason, a need for a law like this, Heidi. All right. Las Vegas city officials have made it to illegal now to sleep within 500 feet of urine or feces. Ew. It's part of a bill making it a misdemeanor to go to the bathroom in public. However, the city attorney says the new law was passed by mistake and won't be enforced. So, you know, there you go. Where was this? Vegas. So what happens in oh. Vegas apparently stinks in Vegas. 
So they're I, saying they don't want homeless I could people. S- just just go into the bathroom on the yeah. street and then, and then you know sleeping over in the corner. Or right. I, don't know. I could see that. You'd think there'd be a better way to do that, though. Instead of you know maybe you, providing. Well, I don't know. I'm not. I have no clue what the answer is, but it just seems that this is a weird answer. <laughs> I don't know. Again, this is why I'm not a city leader, and this is why I don't live in Las Vegas. We had the chance to move there once. Remember that? We did. We went out there, and after two days there, I was like, I'm bored. <laughs> this is the entertainment mecca of the world, and everything there is to do, I don't want to do. So there you go. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This is kind of a fun story right here. Maxi Sopo made posts on Facebook when he was wanted by the police and made it easy for them to track him down for fraud. His messages made it very clear that he was living the high life in the Mexican resort of Cancun after he swiped about $200,000 in credit from banks under false pretenses. Mm. And Facebook status updates, Sopo said he was, quote, loving it, end quote, and described himself as, quote, living in paradise, end quote. And he said he was, quote, just here to have fun, end quote. Again, he's 26 years old. Now he's in custody in Mexico City awaiting extradition to the U.S. So the guy ripped off a bunch of people, $200,000 worth of fraud, Mm. and then went to Cancun and was on Facebook talking about, hey, I'm here. I'm having fun. Thanks for the money. Uh, Yeah, that's not a good idea. Again, I'm not trying to, you know, collude with this guy and come up with ways to to help him, you know, get away with it. But if you're going to steal... Yeah, the last thing you do is go on Facebook. Not a good plan. No. Just just not a good plan. John and Heidi. Election day is almost here. No matter which side you're rooting for, you now have a place to get informed and to truly voice your opinion at politicalstorm.com. An amazing resource with information from people on both sides of the aisle all in one place. Watch videos, read blogs, listen to podcasts like mine, and read fun editorials. You can also contribute with your own blog for free. Be a part of the community at politicalstorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice, too, at politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. If you don't mind having your intelligence insulted, take a listen to this. <laughs> this this happened in a, a South Wales. Is that in England? Mm-hmm. Okay. The council there produced a guide explaining what daylight is. It also defined children and what? pedestrians. It says daylight is all other times than darkness. Children are people under 16. Pedestrians are road users on foot. A spokesperson for the council said these terms are aimed to clarify exactly what the terms mean so there's no confusion. (laughs) Well, they probably have had people argue those things in court. Like, you know, you can't. Yeah, apparently. It's not a child, so I didn't do anything wrong. They had to define what a child is. Moving on to the thoughtless, or not thoughtless, but brainless thinking. I don't know if that's the right word, but... This this story is kind of it, it's similar to that. That's why I put them together. Researchers who set out to determine if quote an apple a day keeps the doctor away end quote is accurate. What do you think they found, Heidi? I'm assuming they found that that is not necessarily true. They found it is actually true, but a little more complicated than that. The study concluded that people who have an apple a day were not less likely to stay overnight in a hospital or visit a mental health professional. But an apple a day keeps the doctor away because they were less likely to need prescription medications. Hmm. So I've got a link to that story at facebook.com slash John and Heidi show. And I guess that's kind of good news because we just bought some apples the other day. We did. A whole bag of them. We did. I had a, a little bag of apples that looked really good. I was like, oh, hey, let's get these. These look delicious. And then Heidi was like, this whole bag for two bucks. <laughs> I'm like, I'll put the delicious one down and I'll get this bag that's going to probably rot on our kitchen I'm counter. I'm sure they're <laughs> wonderful. I have I had, not had one. I yet. did. I had one right away and it really was pretty good. So. I had the caramel to go with them. John yeah. made me put those That was down. funny because we were like, we should try to eat healthier. She's like, I got apples. And then she picks up a package of caramel. I'm like, really? <laughs> I mean, Really? I wonder if a caramel apple in it keeps the doctor no. away. No, keeps the <laughs> dentist at bay. <laughs> I don't know. We've got some good news coming your way. John and Heidi. 
This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. Always try to wrap things up around here with some good news. And I think this is actually pretty darn cool. A Florida homeowner is taking landscaping to a whole new level. Chris, Cast- uh, Chris Castro's obsession is turning the perfectly manicured lawns in his Orlando neighborhood into mini farms. He's asking Floridians to hand over a good chunk of their previous precious yards that were just boring yards before mm-hmm. to volunteers who can plant gardens full of produce and then sell at a local farmer's market. His program is called Fleet Farming, and he's starting off small with just 10 of these yard farms. However, they already have 300 yards on the waiting list. How cool is that? That's very cool. So there are people who say, you know, I live in an apartment and I'd love to have a garden. I just don't have a place to have one. Uh, And then there are other people that say, I've got this gigantic yard that I don't want to take care of. And they're going, hey, how about you and you work together and you can you can do some gardening in this person's backyard. Mm -hmm. So they're matching them up. And then these people are eating the food or they're in in the case of this here. They were selling it at local farmers markets. So I don't know if the person that owns the house gets a cut of that. I'm not sure how that works, but I do have a link. I assume so since it's their yard. I've got a link to the entire story. So if you want to know, you can check into it and find out all the details. I just read what was in the the teaser. It's what they call that. There you go. The teaser is the part of the story that I usually read. And then if I'm really interested, I click on it and read the whole thing. (laughs) Okay, That explains your your lack of information most of the time. Sometimes I only have the teaser. <laughs> and in that case, you ask me things like, oh, how does this work? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. probably so clearly should. the things I find interesting are yeah. not the things that you find I interesting. probably should have read that part. <laughs> I don't hey, know how we've stayed together this At least long. I'm honest about it. That's the that's main thing. And isn't that all that really matters when you think about it? All right, time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. If you'd like to know more about that story, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show.